Hello and welcome to lesson 1.3 in the Python tutorial series of videos. Today's le lesson is going to center around the use of strings in Python. Uh, hopefully, I, I think we're going to spend about three lessons on strings, input, and some advanced string formatting. After the next three lessons, you should be able to use Python to print out messages to the screen, input use input commands to get instructions from the user, use user-generated data as part of your program, and find out ways to creatively print those to the screen in some sort of meaningful way. Now where we're going with this is uh, we're still using the Python shell. This window that you see in front of you right here is the Python shell. You can see that we've got the three little carrots here. And thus far we haven't been writing any real, like, what I would call formal programs. Rather, what we've been doing is typing commands into Python and letting Python resolve the command immediately. Um, after we get done with these next three lessons, what we'll be doing is opening up the programming window and writing programs that can be executed over and over and over again. And after this next series, we'll be doing the first project portion of this uh, series, where you'll be writing a program, putting it together from start to finish, and writing a fully developed program using the skills that you've learned. The plan is to have a project to utilize the skills that you've learned probably once every three to five lessons depending on what lessons they are and how much they cover and that's your opportunity to write a game, write an application uh, using the skills we practice and I'll give you a pretty good outline of what you need to accomplish for that and help you develop it if you have any problems. So like I said, today we're going to be looking at strings in Python. Up until this point, uh, the first two lessons that we did using Python as a calculator and variables, we've, we've looked at two different data types, the float and the integer. But we haven't looked at strings yet. Strings are really simple and very common in programs. Simply put, they're just using characters instead of numbers, and the way Python handles that is, is pretty straightforward, and we're going to look at how this is done. So I'm going to come over here to the Python shell and I'm going to start typing things in. First thing I want to type is hello. And let's just start by typing hello straight away with no um, additional commands. If I just type hello, it's going to return a name error. Name hello is not defined. Just typing hello instructs Python that hello is a variable. We want to name a location in memory hello and we're not setting it equal to any sort of value. So in order to let Python know that you are creating a string, we have to use what are called delimiters. Delimiters in Python are either the double quotation marks or the single quote or apostrophe. If I were to type hello, I see Python returns hello. If I use double quotation marks and type hello, I get the same thing back from Python. It does not matter whether you use the single quotes or double quotes. Python is going to treat that the exact same. There's really no difference. Now, we will discuss why there's two and why you might want to use one or the other. But as you get to be more effective at programming, you'll find the one that uh, sits best with you and the one that you use by default. For me, I'm a single quote person, and I often get into uh, the habit of using nothing but single quotes. Doesn't matter which one you use, but whatever one you start with, that's what you have to finish with. What that means is if I were to type in double quotations, hello, and end with a single quotation instead of a double quotation, I'm going to get a syntax error, EOL while scanning string literal. What that stands for is end of line while scanning string literal, and that means Python's telling me it got to the end of the line and it didn't see the end of the string. That's because in order to see the end of the string, it needs a double quotation mark. If I were to type in hello, put in the apostrophe, but then put in the double quotation marks, I now have my string uh, flanked on either side by the double quotation marks, and it would return hello apostrophe. Uh, similarly, if I were to start with the single quotation marks or the apostrophe and type hello, double quotation mark, that would give me an EOL error, but if I end with the single quotation mark, 
I'll get hello, double quotation mark. So it doesn't matter which one you use, but you need to start and end with the same one. Now you can definitely have more than one word thus far. I've only typed hello, but I could type in something like, hello, how are you doing today? With a question mark. End it with a single quotation mark, because that's what I started with. And it returns, hello, how are you doing today? The entire string that's considered one value, the string itself is one item, and it is equal to, hello, how are you doing today? I can use any sort of punctuation or any kind of characters that I want inside a string. Python will not try to interpret that. Uh, earlier, we looked at mathematical calculations. So if I did uh, 15 mod 5, I get 0 because it's taking 15, dividing by 5, and giving me the remainder. If I were to put that same command in delimiters, in my string delimiters, it's going to return 15 mod 5. Within a string, Python isn't going to try and do any sort of mathematical calculations. It's simply going to return what you have in the string. Uh, much like you know, we, we looked earlier that the dash is the subtraction symbol, but within a string, if I said, that is a far-fetched idea, it's just going to print that's a far-fetched idea. That that minus sign is located within the string delimiters, and so it's not going to be evaluated by Python. Numbers can also be a part of a string, or they can be the entire string. If I were to type in the number 123, that returns the number 123. If I type in the string 123, it returns the string of 123. Now, what we've done, with the exception of the 123, which is a number, everything we've typed in thus far has been a string. That is a third data type in Python and a very common data type. We've looked at integers, INT. We've looked at floating point numbers, or floats. And this lesson focuses on strings. So that's three different data types in Python. And there's a big difference between integers and strings that we'll take a look at in a minute. Now we can set our strings equal to variables as well, just like we did with numbers. So let's say we have a friend John and we want to greet John. So I've got John greeting. And my greeting is going to be, hello John, how are you today? Just like when we set a number equal to a variable, Python doesn't return anything, it just takes us to the next line. Now it did assign the string, hello John, how are you doing today? to the variable John greeting. And I can see that if I type in just John greeting and ask Python, what's in John greeting? It prints back, hello John, how are you doing today? I might have a variable called John question. And I don't know what John's last name is, so I'm gonna say, what is your last name? Question mark. And now John question is equal to, what is your last name? Now, I told you earlier, it doesn't matter whether you use single quotes or double quotes, and that is absolutely true. But one thing that you might want to keep in mind is sometimes you're going to want to use an apostrophe or quotation marks within your strings. Let's say I was going to type a string that I knew was going to use an apostrophe. We're going to call this insult, and the variable insult is going to be uh, equal to an insulting statement, such as, you're a terrible person. Well, I can tell something's a little bit off just by looking at the colors. It starts off green, which is normal for a string, and then all of a sudden, halfway through your, it turns into black text. And that's because the delimiter that I started my string with was a single quotation mark. So when I got to the apostrophe in your, Python interpreted that as being the end of the string. The rest doesn't really, I, I guess it, it's going to create a syntax error, because right now insult is equal to you, and there's a bunch of characters that Python doesn't know what to do with. So you can see that's going to create a invalid syntax error, and it's highlighted right there after the apostrophe. In this case, I would want insult to start with the quotation marks, and then I could type, you're a terrible 
person, end with the quotation marks, and you can see I didn't get an error at all. When I type in insult, you're a terrible person shows up. So if I know I'm going to be using an apostrophe in my string, I should start with quotation marks. Um, in a similar sense, if I know I'm going to be using a quotation, say I'm going to use a quote within my string, I might need to start with the apostrophe. So I'm going to say quote, and Abraham Lincoln said four, your, four score and seven years ago. So quote is going to equal, I'm going to start with the apostrophe so that I can quote four score and seven years ago. That was a direct quote, was a, was a statement by Abraham Lincoln. And now I close it with my single quotation or my apostrophe, and I can see quote is equal to four score and seven years ago was a statement by Lincoln. And the reason I chose the apostrophe was because I knew I was going to have quotation marks. Now there are times where you're gonna to have to use both. If your string has an apostrophe and a quotation mark in it together, you're gonna to have to use something called an escape sequence. Escape sequences are going to be covered in lesson 1.4, so you don't need to worry about them right now, but there are ways to use both, and we will talk about that fairly shortly. Uh, by the way, if, if you're yelling at me uh, for typing four F-O-R score and seven years ago, I, I do know it's F-O-U-R. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of making these examples up as I go along, so I was thinking more about the programming, less about the actual quotation. So before you say anything about it, I do understand that it was the number four F-O-U-R score and seven years ago. Uh, my mistake, but it's easier just to move on than it is to change the video. Now we can do some basic mathematical operations with strings as well. Let's say we wanted to say, um, favorite plus animal for, you know, what is your favorite animal? Or we want those two words to show up next to one another. When I do favorite plus anim animal and have both of those as strings, I get favorite animal together with no spaces. Now, if I want to have a space in there, what I might have to type is favorite space and then close my string. That space will be part of the string plus animal. And I'll get the string back favorite animal. I, I can add sentences together so I can say that my favorite, favorite animal is A. I'm going to put my tailing space and plus dog because my favorite animal is a dog. When I type that sentence together, it will take my favorite animal is A and then add the word dog to the end, returning the sentence, my favorite animal is a dog. <clears throat> I might want to set that equal to a variable, and I'm going to name my variable animal, and that's going to equal my favorite animal is a, with the space, plus dog. And when I type animal, I can see animal is equal to my favorite animal is a dog. What I can also do is set some uh, strings equal to variables and add the, the string variables together. Um, so let's say the beginning of my, my example will be is that part one is equal to my favorite, <clears throat> and I'm going to put my space at the end. Now, I might have different favorite, maybe my favorite car, maybe my favorite animal, my favorite TV show. And so I'm going to create a variable called question. And we're going to add the word car. And I'm going to have my space at the end to make sure that it all gets added together. I can show you how to do that a little bit simpler in the future. But so 
the question is going to be my favorite car. And then part two, we'll say is a, and then my answer is, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, partial to the uh, Saturns myself. So good old Saturn, who doesn't like Saturn as a vehicle? So my answer is my favorite car is a Saturn. And that will be the end of the sentence. Now, part one is equal to my favorite, question is equal to car, part two is equal to is a, and answer is equal to Saturn. If I add those all together and say part one plus question plus part two plus answer, I'm going to return my favorite car is a Saturn. I might change question to planet. And I know this is going to create a gr grammatical nightmare, but by changing question to planet, I can say part one plus question plus part two plus answer. My favorite planet is a Saturn. Not, of course, the planet Saturn, but just any Saturn-like planet. By adding those variables together, I can create complete sentences. Where this becomes really useful is where you're writing your own video games and you might have the user type in their character name and you want to return a message that says, hello, character name, you're about to embark on a quest or whatever it is that you're going to be asking everyone to do. What we're doing here with the, uh, the addition is called string concatenation. String concatenation is taking two strings and putting them together. And we can add two strings just like you've seen right here. Another mathematical expression that works with strings is multiplication. So let's say I wanted to make somebody laugh. I could type ha 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 ha, and it would return ha 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 ha. That's a, that's a lot of typing. I might know I want them to laugh five times. If I do the string ha times five, I'll get the same thing. By doing so, I can say, I, this is a, a really good joke. They're going to laugh twice as hard. I'm going to have ha times 10. It's going to take the string ha and repeat it 10 times immediately after itself. I can also add and multiply together. Remember that the same order of operations that applies to mathematics will apply to strings as well. So if I were to type moi plus ha times 5. The first thing that will happen is ha will get multiplied by 5, creating a ha 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 string, and then moi will get added to it, creating the string moi ha 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 ha. If I change the if I, if I change the order of operations using parentheses, for example, moi plus ha times five. The first thing that will happen is mwaha gets added together to create a five letter mwaha word times five. And that's gonna create mwaha, 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 and so on. Now this is gonna be a very important concept because if you have strings that contain numbers, especially when we do the guess the number game, which will be one of our first projects. If I were to do the number 12 times four, it ret returns 48. If I were to do the string 12 times 4, it will be equal to 12, 12, 12, 12. A string simply gets repeated by however many times. Uh, the numbers get multiplied as you would normally see in math. Uh, the same concept, if I were to do 12 plus 4, I would get 16. The string 12 plus the string 4 is equal to the string 1, 2, 4. Normally, my, my beginning students oftentimes get a little bit confused by this. I think it's a very simple concept, but until you get used to it, um, especially using Python input, because when you use the input statement in Python, Python automatically interprets anything the user types in to be a string. That means if you ask a user to enter a number and they enter 5, it's always going to enter the string of 5, not the number 5. That's going to make 
you as the programmer have to do a little bit of conversion or think about it a little bit if you're trying to do math with numbers that a user has inputted. Now that's the only two mathematical operations that will work when using strings. If I were to do something like a minus b or a minus n because my finger was off the keyboard, I'm going to get an unsupported operand type subtraction for string and string. It's saying I can't add two string or subtract two strings together. I could add those two strings together because addition is a supported operand. Therefore, I'd get and, but I can't subtract those two things from one another. Uh, another thing that commonly happens, and this will probably happen more often than not, is if I were to type in my shoe size is plus 12. I'm trying to add a string and an integer together. And Python doesn't know how to do that. It's trying to add a number to characters, and that's going to create a, a type error, can't convert integer to string implicitly. That means it's not going to just assume that you meant the string 12 because my shoe size is a string. If I wanted that sentence to concatenate properly, I'd have to type in my shoe size is plus the string 12. That will work because the string 12 is a string and we're adding two strings together. You can't add strings to numbers. And that's a common error you'll see in like a guess the number game or programs where you're asking users to input numbers and you're trying to put their numbers into strings. You might see that error quite a bit and that's what causes it. It's when you have a string and an integer trying to be added together. Um, you can't use exponentiation. So if I said a raised to the power of n, that's going to give me an unsupported operand error. I can't divide numbers by each other. So a divided by b is going to give me an unsupported operand. The only two operations you can do with strings are addition and subtraction. That pretty much covers the basics of strings. You should be able to identify what a string literal is. A string literal is just a sequence of characters. Um, anything that shows up in those delimiters is called a string literal. You can assign strings to variables. So any named variable or named memory location can have a string in it in addition to numbers. And the basics of string concatenation was also part of this lesson today. That means we can add two strings together, such as hello plus world or you know, I am taking a class plus fourth plus period. And I can multiply those strings together like we did with ha. Now the next lesson that we will be covering in lesson, in lesson 1.4, we're going to be looking at Python and user input. That is, how do we get the user to type in something and do something creative with it? And that's really the crux of programming. Programs are really boring if the user doesn't have any control over what's going on. So using the input command, we can start to get some direction from the user and have a program react in different ways, depending on what the user types in. That'll be part of lesson 1.4. I look forward to seeing everyone there. Until then, have a great day.